Hello, everybody. I'm very glad that you come here. By the way, how many programmers are here? OK, that's good. Um, I hope after this meeting you will change at least a bit your mind. And uh, yeah, that's my goal. We'll see how I will achieve it. So let me start in this way. Uh, what if I tell you that in next 5, 10, or 15 years, probably you will lose your job? And I know that you will react like this because I'm a programmer and I really need it. A lot of company fighting for me and so on. But let me tell you something. So we are living in time when everything changes and changes very quickly. Right now we have fourth industrial revolution. So this is fourth one, not first one. It's kind of expected. But on the other hand, what's the difference between previous one? All of those revolutions change our life and our relations and our quality of life and a lot of things around. Let me show you some arguments what I mean by this. So today was mentioned autonomous car and here Weimar. Weimar, Weimar is uh, Google brand, and so this is not only autonomous car, this is about how to use it. And assume that your uh, call for taxi, uh, car arrived, and inside the car you don't have driver, only only taxi. And here is first customers. Okay, day one of self-driving, are you ready? <laughs> Go. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, is there no one driving that car? <laughs> I knew it. I was waiting for it. Here is real prototype. But uh, probably I know that autonomous car, it's kind of very um, uh, high, uh, very popular topic, kind of hype. And what do you think about autonomous bike? Hear it. The Dutch cycle more than any other nation in the world. Almost 900 kilometers per person. But that also means we have 350,000 bike-related injuries. Now imagine that we would make biking safer, smarter and easier by applying self-driving technology to biking. We taught our self-driving bike to figure out where it is, what's around it, what will happen next and what it should do. We leaned on Google's expertise in self-driving cars but we had to adapt the technology to work on a bike. We decided to add two additional features. First, you can request the bike to pick you up wherever you are, and we developed a comfort mode, adjusting the pedals to a perfect resting position. I think the self-riding bike could really give a boost to the economy, because people could also work uh, on their bicycle. You work in your office, you work in your home, you work in your car. You could even work on your bike. Yeah, what do you think about? Yeah, I should be honest with you exactly. So this is news from 1st April. But on the other hand, why I'm shown here, right now there are a lot of news about AI, what's going on, and you should be a bit critical. This is only one fake on this presentation. But on the other hand, I won't prepare you to be ready that you will see a lot of news and not of them really true. Another example about autonomous right now, yeah, I will just show you.
So here is a real hotel in Japan, uh, close to Tokyo. If you will be there, it will, it will be really nice to check it by your own. And that's example AI and uh, creativity. So you have original image, you have kind of template, you can combine together and you get something more interesting than original. Or actually, last one I saw uh, GitHub uh, repository when you have some famous uh, picture and you can add something what you want and uh, push, push through some network and you will have kind of adopted your changes in the same style. Next example, how many young parents are here? Like young I means uh, do you have babies like up to two years more or less? Okay, few of you. Probably sometimes you're feeling a bit uh, confused when you're baby cried and you don't know what to do and machine learning can help you. So it works in this way, uh, your baby crying, you have application on your mobile and it's try to transform in human uh, language, in this case plain English, what does it mean for you, what you should do. Actually there are five commands but sometimes it's enough and uh, especially for young parents it can be a bit useful story. Another example about that our world change and we, we should be ready for this is imagine that there is a concert and, and everything is normal. There are a lot of people, um, there is a stage, but no person on the stage. There is only hologram. Yeah, let's check it. <laughs> Usually people tell us that, that this is uh, Japan and we are totally different, this is kind of true. But on the other hand, Hatsune Miku traveling around the world, last year she visited the US, uh, this year coming back, uh, Mexico, I have checked, probably don't visit Europe, at least in this year, but who knows what will be in next uh, few years. Another example from Japan and about uh, those type relation, well, let me first show you this movie and comment later. あ、朝ですよ。起きてください。ねえ、起きてってば。おはよう。おはよう。あ、今日雨が降るかもしれないから傘持って行って。急がないと遅刻しちゃうよ。行ってきます。<笑>
おやすみなさい And again, you can say this is Japan. We are totally different, but look around. And right now, there is a trend when individualism is very promoted, and people try to be one of the best. Like I'm, I'm the best in this world. On the other hand, humans are humans, and they need some relations. And how those relations will be solved? Probably in this way. By the way, human need uh, other relations as well, and AI can help even on this level. But I will not show you here. But you can check at home. Next example about uh, how AI can develop uh, in, in general in the next uh, decades. So there are at least two schools. One school is, let's say, pure mathematics or uh, more around those stuff. And second school is inspired by nature. This is quite popular. Actually, the most uh, genius stuff is inspired by nature because nature created by genius. But yeah, let's, let's check what this means in practice. So there is a project which is called Blue Brain Project uh, based in Swiss, I s yeah, Swiss, Switzerland. And they try to copy our brain, uh, try to emulate in a, a digital way. So they have some deadline. Right now, actually, I'm not sure that the deadline is correct, but it sounds interesting. And if they already if they did it, what does it mean for all us? So let me put an example. There are two, uh, two young uh, girls here, and they born, uh, they're almost normal, except that they have connected these uh, uh, two brains into one. But the idea is if first girl thinking about something, she can move, for example, hand uh, second one, and vice versa. That means that you can connect in some way to brain and put some signal and do something. So right now, they, uh, so people try to understand how it works. And this is, again, how usually it works. People try to copy-paste. Don't understand what the signal means, but they just copy-paste the signal and you raise your hand if I push this button or something like this. And another example about uh, brain, because brain itself is really amazing topic. And even now, when you're uh, listening to this presentation, probably your brain looks like this. There are a lot of uh, interesting projects related with brain and connected with brain. One of them called like brain computer interface. And here is the idea. Uh, so right now at work at G, and one of the products what developed there is MRI. Uh, so you have, so there is person, right now there isn't, and we scan the brain. And uh, based on those pictures, uh, we can predict what this person see. Let me put an example. So here is original image, which shown to some person. And here is reconstruct image by deep learning and MRI. So it looks like a bit different than original ones. But on the other hand, it looks like something interesting, right? For example, here, of course, probably it's not like real one, but still you have you see this green rectangle and so on. So does it mean that it's possible read faults? It's kind of a tricky question. Probably I will try to answer in the end of this uh, presentation. And uh, who knows this quote, Isaac Asimo? That the silent aspect of the life right now is the science gathers knowledge faster than uh, society gathers wisdom. This is kind of problem, and I hope that people who will uh, engage on the project related with machine learning, AI, and so on will think about ethics, about what they're doing, and how to improve uh, the life, not only to make money for somebody. Okay, let me put some example from business point of view, how ML can be useful. Netflix. Uh, turn out that some time ago, at least right now, probably bigger quote, uh, that they sa save about one billion dollars per year because they recommend right moves and people continue subscription. Another example from DeepMind. So here is uh, they provide deep learning model, 
for cooling uh, center system and here is turn on. If you have lower mileage, it's better. And in the end of the day, they save more or less 30%. So for scale at Google, it's really big effort. Um, next thing about uh, useful use cases, PayPal, uh, fraud detection. So they have this kind of industrial leverage uh, fraud detection, like 1.3. And they reduced by one percent, and end of the day, they saved about two and uh, a bit more billions dollars. A few other examples related with medicine um, from Stanford both. So here is a cardiogram, and we try to detect some anomalies. And another one here is uh, Rengens, and uh, we try to detect for this case actually pneumonia. And for both cases, it looks like the model works uh, similar uh, on level like doctors or sometimes even better. Or here is another example, quite fresh one, when Google and few other uh, institutes connected together and they tried to predict different things related with medicine. One of them was when uh, this, there is one person and they predict if this person die in next uh, one day or two days. And if yes, somebody should care. And uh, right now, of course, we have some system, like uh, some doctor's estimation and so on, but this is not scale and there are a lot of uh, errors in those predictions. So this is this, the next example when our model can save lives. And the question will be probably in your mind, is it only for big players, AI, ML, and so on. So let me put an example. Uh, here is the first mobile phone, Motorola, and uh, actually here is first call, at least uh, in theory. Uh, this man called to somebody. By the way, do you know uh, who, who calls this man right now? Not here. <laughs> so he called to a competitor to say that he already done and it works and by other side it will be a bit sad message. But the idea is when it's appear, it's uh, appeared actually 73 and 83 it was uh, available to buy. They have some promotion and usually people tell, okay, but I, I'm not the boss, I don't need those stuff. Why why you try to sell me something uh, like mobile phone? I don't need connection with the world. But right now who don't have mobile phone? Who has two? Okay. No. Anyway, uh, there is an interesting page about will a robot take your job? You can provide your role here. I, I've checked some of them, financial accounts manager. It looks like very big probability that it will be a lost job in near future. Uh, something what I'm doing now, architects, system designers, looks like a bit better. We can summarize this in this way. We have two dimensions. One of them is uh, how it looks like this task. It's uh, uh, routine or it's uh, repeatable or it's very different all the time. And another dimension is, is it number, words? Actually about Polish it's a bit better because uh, Polish is a bit complicated language compared to English and right now people still better than Martians but it will be changed in the next few years. Uh, so you work with images or working with humans. Who work with humans? Like uh, managers or something like this? There are some. Is, is it easy? Like how? Kind of, right? It's very unpredictable usually. Yeah, and abstract thinking is the most complicated. And if you are here, probably it's the best choice for you. If you are here, you should start think uh, about something else. And again, you can say, okay, but I'm a programmer and I'm still non-replaceable because the uh, market really needs me. The idea is that even in, uh, in the end of uh, 69, uh, 17 years, uh, those two men thinking about how to automate programming and how to automate this, the whole process, and they figure out some ideas like a rule-based program and there are some challenges in this approach. First of all, no formal specification, because to prepare this formal specification, it's required much more effort than just prepare program itself. Another problem is typo. We are human and typo is kind of normal stuff. And even if both solved, uh, again, we have poor performance. So even if this program works, it works very, very bad. But this is the story from 
last center. Right now we have something else, we have deep learning stuff. And here is one of the example how we can generate code. Here is the code we generated by machine and how it works. Uh, the person gets the source from Linux kernel, trains the model, and uh, it took probably three days more or less. It was about 16 megabytes source C code and generates this. And in general it looks good. Uh, there is some not use variable like here and returns a variable which doesn't exist here, so it will not compile. But the good story about those brackets and so on. So it, it looks like a good one. So probably uh, syntax is good, semantic not the best one, but if you want you can analyze probably something interesting can, uh, you can find. Another example right now, uh, the model was trained on Java code, Android actually stuff, uh, this is again Java code, and the idea was I will have some templates, for example like this, and here is something what model should complete. And in green one you have how model manages this, and it's quite good. And the metrics, success metrics for here was not only compile the code, but also it should be efficient. Another example, there is some startup, they, they are thinking about teaching machines to code. Or a few other examples. Um, you have some sketch, you push the sketch to some machine learning model and get uh, output uh, like code. And here is how it works. So you have some diagram like this. This diagram was translated to this uh, DSL and after DSL can translate it to HTML, Android or iOS. And uh, here is some example from practice. This is totally compatible. So more model works good. Here is some error happened, so one rectangle missed and this one missed. About label don't care, they just uh, found this is label and generate some random stuff. The, the idea was just detect this is label, not just copy paste uh, uh, the same text. And it looks like good. Or another example, you have HTML, uh, like image and uh, you can run it and the output will be H yeah, HTML, CSS, and uh, I think JavaScript as well. So this code is available on GitHub. You can run by yourself even when you come back after this presentation. Does it mean that machine learning can do everything even now? Uh, no. And here is some proof. Here is a robot which should put this uh, nice box to nice table. And he is trying, he is facing this challenge. Um, yeah, but he's trying and game over. So market needs some people who can help with those challenges. And here is another interesting story from this man. I'm not sure that uh, you're aware about him, but it's kind of uh, now person in b billionaire. And he said about that Machine learning is really a great idea to start think about this and maybe a short video about this. So this is why, uh, this is kind of interesting. So next trillionaire will uh, burn on our eyes. And second one, that uh, something we've related with soft skill like psychology, philosophy and so on will be more uh, needed in near future. But also programmers will be needed, but for more complicated cases. So right now, let me show some example what really market needs now. Here is some uh, report from EU. Uh, in 2016, they will uh, require about 6 million people. Uh, 2020 required about 10 million. So the problem is that even 
uh, for this year they don't have enough people who can work with uh, data. Uh, four years later they need almost double number. And there is a problem because university usually don't educate those skills. University usually is very nice in terms of mathematics or physics, at least old um, topics. But usually if we talk about machine learning is not enough. Uh, this is change even uh, uh, in Krakow, in Warsaw, I know some initiatives, but this is not on this scale. This is about, let's say, 60% uh, or 100%, not about millions. Here is uh, indeed best jobs. Uh, do you know indeed, right? This is kind of aggregator different jobs. And the first place here, full stack developer. I will explain about what does mean in practice now. And second one is data scientist. So this is a bit extended uh, role for machine learning. About full stack developer means, this is article is really nice summary about this, that in next few years, here is actually two years, that full stack developer will require AI or ML also. So does it mean that you, if for example, you're a programmer or you're a full stack developer, does it mean that you should be expert in ML? No, actually, be, no, because it's really hard to be expert in ML. But on the other hand, you should know some tool and you should know how to connect already prepared solution. Another example from Pratsvpl, uh, so this is, uh, the page when if you're looking at job probably one of uh, the best choice there are few alternatives but looks the similar and in January 20 uh, in this year I have checked for machine learning and for data science so it's those numbers in March I have checked again it looks like a bit different two years ago it was like few roles only uh, available in Poland and even those few roles do for example, we need machine learning ninja or engineer, whatever. But if you check description, they use Excel, uh, yeah, and so on. So right now it's a bit changed. There are still some funny, uh, funny roles, funny description, but some of them looks very, very interesting. Uh, example from Indeed it looks a bit different because US right now required uh, not only 100, but let's say 100,000 those people. And here is of trend. For example, if you are working with Java and you are thinking that Java is the most popular stuff, uh, you can see how it changed in time. In uh, actually, this is the end of uh, 2017. Uh, in blue is machine learning, and here is Ruby. Ruby actually uh, decreased also in time. And last, probably interesting story about uh, salary. So probably for Poland, you can use PLN here. Yeah, and it will be adaptable for, for Poland. This is interesting article from Google. AI software learns to make AI software. And this is quote already appeared today that uh, software eating machine learning, but machine learning eating software. So probably this is the time when you want to retrain yourself from programmer to programmer 2.0 or if you are not programmer but analyst, it can be analyst 2.0 and so on. Here is the next interesting article from Andrei Karpati. Who knows Andrei Karpati? This is an uh, interesting person. Probably you should know about him. Uh, he write down this article, Software uh, 2.0, and he explains the idea. The idea, in short, is that it will be like classical programmers, what will be changed, you will use kind of black box, ML black box, which solves some problem for you. And your role will be not implemented everything from scratch, your role will be connected those stuff together. Okay, let's say you've decided to go here, you want to start to uh, learn about machine learning, and you even type in Google uh, machine learning, you found different result, uh, you assume that I'm very optimistic now and I will read without any uh, dinners, lunch, and, uh, sleeping and so on, and spend only 10 minutes per one. So you need about 70 years. So it's quite long. Another challenge which you can face that when you check this first one or another one, you will see content like this and how many people can interpret it. Not there are a few. This is kind of normal, but normally it should be, uh, I know that after university we are 
I remember something about integrals and so on, but usually after a few years, it's a bit difficult. And this is why I promote this approach like driver and mechanic, because I really believe that right now we need much, much more drivers, let's say 90% or even more and less mechanic. What does mean in practice this analogy? In the world right now, we have, let's say, two billion uh, drivers, and most of them totally don't know how car engine works or other stuff works under hood. But this is not a problem, right? Because drivers should go from A, point A to point B. He won't avoid traffic jump, uh, driver won't park somewhere, uh, cheap some, uh, uh, find some cheap service about uh, car and so on and so on. So this is a problem for drivers. And if his driver doesn't work, he uh, moves his driver to uh, mechanic, assuming that mechanic knows how it works, because sometimes it's also optimistic assumption, and the mechanic will solve it. So in summary, right now there are some uh, research labs like DeepMind and other, they made, make, they do great progress in terms of developing those stuff, but much more people require it with skills who can connect it, who can map this theory to business problem. Okay, let's try and understand in practice what does mean mapping those stuff. So the workflow machine learning looks like one this slide. We, first, we should understand business and data. And this is kind of trivial uh, step and usually very often just skip. And this is why most ML problems, uh, at least for initial step, failed because people don't understand data and don't understand business, just try to use some advanced model. Next up is feature engineering. Feature engineering means we create new feature. Feature means some attributes. For here, uh, for this table, you have some columns like season, temperature, hours, day, month, blah, blah, blah. And all of them is features. Let's say you have uh, a feature like daytime and you can extract from one column many other columns. For example, you can extract year, month, uh, day, hours, and so on. But also you can extract uh, day of the week. For, for example, Monday is different than Friday in terms of behavior of user. Or you can extract uh, how close is to some holiday or uh, some other, for example, specific date, and so on. And before you have only one column, after extraction you have much more. Next step is kind of opposite step, that we generate a lot of features, but some of them is uh, useless and we won't remove it. This is called feature selection. We keep only the best ones. In analogy level, you can think about that if you need to make some decision, when is easy to make it? When you have only two choices or 2,000 choices? Probably when you have two choices, it's much more stable. The same for machine learning. Next, we have a phase when we build some model, deep learning or decision tree or boosting, blah, 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 a lot of them. Uh, tuning hyperparameters and select, let's say, two of them and pick together with some weights. Okay, next topic about deep learning. Uh, before I start talking about deep learning, do you know uh, deep learning is interpretable or doesn't? Is it black box or no? Today we discussed about, uh, today was presentation one about Lime. So the question is, deep learning is black box or not? It is, it is. I don't have a lot of time. I will help. Uh, but why you won't use it? Why we don't use linear model? And the problem is that yeah, here is a nice example. Here is just married uh, woman and there is some m smart guy who tried to explain what will happen in next uh, month. And he said, yesterday you have zero husband, today you have one, and the end of the month you will have about 30. So probably you should uh, think about this and buy uh, some torts, money, and so on. So uh, in very simple way, we can explain in this way. We have one dimension, interpretability, and second one, capability. Deep learning, boosting, usually it's not interpretable by definition, but on the other hand, it can solve much more complicated problems. And this is why we decided to use it. For example, PayPal or 
DeepMind or Stanford, all of them use deep learning under hood and actually they don't have choice. They have choice to use some tool which can solve the problem or not solve the problem. There is simple choice. So the idea is try to think about how we can solve this interpretability. And this is actually appear today. There is one example. You have this kind of dog, human, something in the middle. And in another example, we've Husky and Wolf, and it learns that snow is correlated with uh, Wolf, but it's not true. About neural network, how it works under hood. Very, very quick refresh. By the way, who knows how work neural network? Some, some of you. Okay, let's let's refresh very, very quick. So here is some example. We want to buy, let's say, this house. Uh, we have features like area and some others like bias. And in neural network, uh, uh, it will look like this. We have some circle. We have some connection. Here is feature. Here is weight. We times together those number with this, those with this, and sum up. And what machine learning, uh, how it works in terms of machine learning. We know those information because this is our features. For example, we know area of this house. We have, we know uh, a number of rooms, but we don't know those things, those weights. And what we are doing, we put something random here. We checked, so uh, times this, 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 sum up. We have some value, let's say 500,000 or more or less. This is a bit more than I've expected. And I've tried to change those weights in the way to minimize this error. And I'm trying to repeat sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. And uh, after, let's say, 20 epochs, I can reach the best weight. So this is more or less what we are doing. So let's check for uh, these examples, like recognize digit. We read this uh, digit by using keras. Here is the most interesting part. This is uh, architecture to solve this problem. And you will have a value, actually, error in about 1.6. And uh, it's like for 1,000 images, you failed only for 16. Uh, here is another example. And you can use CNN for the same problem. And you will have much better result. Here is the best result which you can achieve. And as it looks, it looks like quite simple. Maybe for people who never see it before, it's a bit complicated. But there are some blocks. And this block is repeatable. You can copy paste this block, this block, change only those numbers, and put these three lines. That's all. I, I think if you spend 15 minutes, you will learn how to achieve this uh, level. But the idea is it's a very trivial problem. Let's see find something more complicated. Here is traffic signs. Um, this is an image, 32 for 32 pixels. In practice, it looks a bit uh, more complicated than we can expect. Or for example, it looks like this. Oh, here is a, a challenge for you. What do you think? What's the difference between first rectangle and second one? Lighter, right? Maybe. Something else? So we don't have a lot of time. I will help you. So here is, as you see, a uh, curve to the left. But here is famous uh, black square uh, Malevich. And this is the input data which we have. And we should manage in some way those, those input. And you can see that left, right. Right actually is a bit better. I'm not sure do you see it, but it's you can see this shape, right? It's still not the best, but a bit better. I will tell you how to solve this problem. This is a kind of problem for drivers. So this is not a theoretical problem. It's about how to fix those issues. And another problem is that we have different proportion of those data. So what we are doing, we get CNN model. Let's say copy paste from, from NIST. And there is one problem, kind of big problem from, for this architecture. Uh, it doesn't work at all. Uh, and this is a bit sad message because before you was master for NIST, but for more complicated problem, it failed. The good news, if you add one more block, so for example, you have only two, you add third one, you can see it's almost the same. You change only these numbers. Uh, it's, it starts working. It's still not the best, but it looks like here is accuracy. Uh, when it appeared one means 100 percent, the best result. So, and you have two lines. One is train, second one is test. So right now it looks quite good. Right now we adding one more uh, kind of doubled uh, layers. 
and after this is there is three percent and adding dropout and right now we have very close those lines that means it's not overfit and this is the time when you can feel that you a master for this traffic signs next stuff what you can do you can uh, a bit change those uh, contrast a bit lighting you can convert rgb to gray and minimize three times number of parameter it's quite uh, good stuff and here is answer how to fix left uh, traffic sign the left curve so you can make flip vertical flip for right and in this way just remove all left one and keep on the uh, flip it right and you should change label as well and here is some another story what you can do or even you can crop this uh, uh, sign this way but again life is unpredictable and you should be ready to see something uh, what is not normal and last example quite uh, simple but very fast so here is two phase one from real life second one from passport i think uh, you have a bit different in passport uh, image as well so the idea what we want to achieve we want to compare either the same person or no how how we achieve it so first we detect face and second we convert this face to vector uh, second one we have two vectors we calculate distance Euclidean distance here and compare is it number less than dot uh, zero dot six if yes this is the same person oh by the way this is magic number don't care about this because uh, it's normal in machine learning we have a lot of magic numbers how they appear we just check for different value and select the best one we don't know why but we know that this is works the best yeah and here is uh, what do you think is it the same person yes here yes <laughs> here yes but models said no as well and uh, yeah this is a bit challengeable and here is code what you need you have two models uh, first model detects 68 dots here is the nose eyes and so on and this way you are more or less uh, uh, make the same prediction even if you moved face so here is the line which you predict uh, convert face to vector and here is compare to read image one vector second vector compare those vector that's all what you need so in summary start to use deep learning cnn uh, rnn like recurrence neural network it's not big deal for now you don't need phd if you want you can do it but this is not about uh, to solve problem in practice you, you will just have phd uh, second one remember about overfitting today i don't talk a lot about this but remember this is kind of big challenge in machine learning and remember about analogy driver and mechanics and at the end of the day sorry for non-polish uh, guys here is uh, link if you subscribed here you will receive free emails with those examples with github repository uh, and you can play around by yourself uh, why it's not solved in one because if i've sent in one probably will ignore and this is why i split for free emails each emails will be sent by week and in three weeks you will receive it and last thing for today if you want to learn more there is uh, my initiative about machine learning uh, for programmers 2.0 and last thing for today who listening podcast okay who knows business mission okay people who doesn't know should uh, fix it so we type business mostly subscribe uh, yeah if you want to learn more about in general if if we want to learn more start listening podcast this is a really great source for uh, gather some knowledge if you want to learn about ai uh, you can start listening business mission here is some contact to me and thank you very much